President Trump has pulled the trigger, declaring a national state of emergency on the southern border in order to fund and build a wall and other things. How did it happen and how will the emergency work? Washington correspondent Kristen Fisher is all around the madness and she's here to unwind it all for us. Kristen. Hey, Brian, well, this emergency declaration is only a few hours old, but already the ACLU says that it will sue President Trump and the House Judiciary Committee has launched an investigation. Democrats on the committee sent a letter to President Trump tonight saying that we believe your declaration of an emergency shows a reckless disregard for the separation of powers and your own responsibilities under our constitutional system. By fabricating an emergency order to bypass the political process for allocating a budget, you appear to be abusing both this trust and your own oath of office. But President Trump predicted all of that when he announced the emergency declaration in the Rose Garden earlier today. The order is signed, and uh, I'll sign the final papers, and we will then be sued, and they will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, uh, even though it shouldn't be there, and we will possibly get a bad ruling, and then we'll get another bad ruling, and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court, and hopefully we'll get a fair shake, and we'll win in the Supreme Court. Now, the declaration will give President Trump about $8 billion to build his border wall. The White House says its attorneys have spent weeks going through the ins and outs of an emergency declaration to ensure that President Trump is on solid ground, and they believe he is. But some Republicans believe it's an abuse of executive power and could set a bad precedent. So this is going to be hashed out in court and in Congress for quite some time. But at least Washington has avoided another government shutdown. Brian, that was set to start in just about four hours if they hadn't reached a deal. Right. Brian? And I just love the way the president went through that because he basically outlined what we're going to be covering and how we're going to be covering it over the next year or so. Kristen, thanks so much. He did. Thanks. Uh, all right. Meanwhile. The president vowed that his national emergency will get the job done and halt the decades-long crisis at the border. We're going to be signing today and registering national emergency because we have an invasion of drugs, invasion of gangs, invasion of people, and it's unacceptable. So we have a chance of getting close to $8 billion dollars whether it's $8 billion or $2 billion or $1.5 billion, it's going to build a lot of wall. We're getting it done. Well, he got a green light for at least 55 miles of wall, and then we'll see about the $8 billion. It'll get you a lot more. But CNN's Jim Acosta accused the president of conjuring up a broken border crisis out of thin air. Let me just ask you this. What do you say to your critics who say that you are creating a national emergency, that you're concocting a national emergency here in order to get your wall. I, I you asked the angel moms, ways. what do you think? You think I'm creating something? Ask these incredible women who lost their daughters and their sons. Okay. They were there with pictures of their loved ones. What an answer, what a comeback. Why does the president keep calling on him? Well, that's the consensus, the media and of the left. Despite millions of illegal immigrants, despite the mess of the border, they think the president made it up. And our border is just fine. The president of the United States is going to declare a national emergency on our southern border. But I have to tell you, it doesn't look like an emergency from where I'm standing. It's not an emergency, what's happening at the border. A national emergency to solve his manufactured crisis. We don't have a national emergency. That's just not true. There is no national emergency. And there is no national emergency. Right. There's just simply no emergency there. What are we, stupid? A manufactured emergency. Really? Uh, well, the Migration Policy Institute estimates that 827,000 of the 11 million here illegally are convicted criminals. That's a total of 7%. Not 1% should be in the country. Mark Morgan is a former head of the Border Patrol, and he's heard the rhetoric, but he knows the reality. Mark, is the president making up an emergency? Absolutely not. And Brian, this is the part of the frustration for those of us from a law enforcement, border security perspective. How many more statistics do we have to provide? How many more factually based examples do we have to provide? How many more angel families have to stand in front of some of these individuals before they finally say, yeah, okay, this is real. It, it's, it's just incredulous. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's true. And the other thing I thought about too, Mark, and because I know you served during the Obama years, there was an emergency then. They chose not to act on it. It doesn't mean there's not one now, and it doesn't mean they're not getting worse. I mean, the numbers this year show a huge uh, uh, uptick in apprehensions. 
That doesn't count the people we don't catch. So when people say to you, uh, the drugs are coming through the port of entry, let's use some technology to crack down there, there's no problem with drugs in the middle of, uh, of the country and other areas not populated, what do you say? Well, that's right. And a couple of things you hit on, Brian, and you're spot on. So first of all, look at the take right now. 60,000 are coming in a month illegally into this country. So this year so far, 62 caravans of 100 or more, 13 of all of last year, 2,000 in one single day uh, th this week. And so the numbers are, are, are climbing, but it's manufactured, right? And the other thing, the other argument on, on in between the ports of entry, it's a absolute false narrative. 60% of the Southwest border does not have enough infrastructure, technology, and personnel. I call that wide open. So they're, they're disingenuous when they talk about the ports because we don't, Brian, just what you said, we don't know what's getting through, but we do know that it is getting through. And there's a lot that we're not interdicting in between the ports. So, you know, it's just amazing too, because not only do most Democrats not agree, there's a new trend. And mark my words, it's going to be happening all week. Instead of build the wall, take down the fence. That's going to be the method. As a person who's out there trying to defend our border, what does that mean to you? Again, what, what it means to me is that this, this is absolutely driven on identity politics. The experts have spoken both on ICE, both on the United States Border Patrol and CBP, and they've told Congress what they need to protect our borders to, for the security and safety of this country, Brian. And they have not just ignored it. They have just absolutely discounted everything that they've said. And unfortunately, to me, I, I've only drawn one conclusion. It's based on ident right. identity politics. And I just asked for the, the latest, that's why I was looking down, the latest uh, news about January. And so far in January, apprehensions have risen up. There were 58,207 apprehensions in January. Uh, that's the highest it's been over the past uh, five years. And those are the people, as you always tell us, that you get. What about the ones we don't know about? And I Absolutely. just talked to somebody else who just went down to the border because uh, they're serving in the military. And they say some of the techniques that these people crossing are using mirror the military techniques that they've seen in battle. That's what's happening in Arizona. So I'll share more of those stories. Mark, thanks for your up close and personal, unbiased look at what's happening at the border. We'll see where we go from here. Thanks, Meanwhile, Brian. eight minutes after the top of the hour, while President Trump seeks to build a wall, some Democrats think walls are so evil as I've said before, they want to start an anti-wall jihad. Potential presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke said he wants to eliminate whatever defenses are on the Mexican border, in this case, Texas. If you could, would you take the wall down now, here? Yes. Like you have a wall. Absolutely. Like knock it down. I'd take the wall and down. And do you think the city, you think if, this, if there's a referendum here in this city, that would pass? I do. Right. And then ask that question and then run back to New York. Kristen Gillibrand always looking for a new cause to jump on the bandwagon. She might think her ratings might tick up a little bit. She chimed in, and guess what she said? The idea of dismantling some of the wall, good idea, bad idea? Well, I'd have to ask uh, folks in that part of the, uh, of the country to see whether the fencing that exists today is helpful or unhelpful. So I could look at it and see which part he means and why, and if it makes sense, I could support it. If you've been in Washington this long and haven't asked anybody who works the border if a fence helps or not, you're not doing your job. Chris Hahn is a radio host, former staffer to Senator Chuck Schumer, joins us now. Uh, first off, Chris, your reaction to the president's using emergency powers? Completely unconstitutional. I expect all these Federalist Society guys for the last hundred years talking about strict construction of the United States Constitution. Article 1, Section 5, 6, and 7 tells who gets to decide where money is spent. Whether you think the wall is necessary or not, the president needs to convince Congress to do this. And if Congress does not stand up to the president, I don't know why they are there. Are they there for the for the state run offices and the fancy pins? Their job is for their ambition to counteract the president's ambition. And it is their job mm -hmm. as members of Congress to determine where money is spent. And if you are in Congress and worried about being primaried on this issue, maybe you should step down from your leadership position and let somebody with courage to actually do the job of a member of Congress take the reins of that spot and do the job appropriately. This is Chris, completely unconstitutional. Let me give you a scenario. Nine I, empower Chris Hahn. I empower Chris Hahn as president of the United States or somebody in that area, governor of Texas, Arizona. And you see a legitimate yep. problem at the border and no one else uh, than politics is keeping you from backing up the border and keeping the people safe that you were elected to do. 
You would do anything you could to protect your family, your constituents. That's exactly what the president's doing. And thanks to a 1976 yeah. ruling, he's got the executive power to do it. <laughs> and he says, if you have a problem with it, take me to court. What's wrong with that? Well, well, look, emergencies don't you don't get to choose emergencies. Emergencies choose you. This president's been waiting on an emergency for two years. Congress didn't see the emergency. If Congress thought this was an emergency when we were debating this over the last 45 days, they would have given him the funding for this. He couldn't convince Congress that there was an emergency. So there must not be an emergency. Plus, border crossings are at a 50 year low. So I don't understand what he's worried about. What is the fear that he's trying to generate? I'll tell you where the emergency is. Brian. Right, Chris, let me just get a word. It, it just it, it's really not at, it's really not at a low because I, I, it, they're at a high. In fact, in January, apprehensions were 58,207, the most over the past five years. And CBP announced that agents in the Rio Grande Valley apprehended 1,300 people on Wednesday. Uh, Come on. I'm using the president's own statistics from 2018, from his own government. These are the, pre the president's hey, statistics. They're at a 50-year low. And the president uh, even hey, Chris, admitted I appreciate, that today I appreciate your passion. Conference. But I think you should ask yourself why President Obama wasn't taking more of an urgency, uh, less than you should ask you why is President Trump doing it this now. Is, this is not about President Obama. This is about the President of the United States violating right. the Constitution of well, the United States. We're going to see. I don't care He's what got $8 billion he and all to. he wants to do is spend he, it, it to keep be, it Chris on safe down. on Long Island. That's all. Chris, <laughs> thanks so much. We want to keep MS-13 out of your neighborhood because we know it's miles away from my house and your house.